Okay guys, so we got an exciting package. These are the replacement pins that came in. Hey guys, welcome back to another studio vlog. And you may be wondering, hmm, replacement pins? What is she talking about? Aren't these her first pins? Well, there's a story to tell, so let's rewind and I'll tell you all about it. I researched several manufacturers from Alibaba and admittedly it was overwhelming. I realized no matter what, I will have to take a chance on someone, so I made a selection. I try to be as prepared as possible by making my design simple, writing down all the details, such as wanting one inch hard enamel pins with black nickel metal, a green rubber clutch, and my logo on the back. I provided the Pantone colors and even an SVG file to the manufacturer. It felt off from the beginning when the manufacturer was rushing me to make a payment. At that moment, I should have trusted my gut and went with someone else, but I kept going as they kept reiterating that they have 15 plus years experience and so on. After a week, I got a DHL notification that a package will be delivered in a week from China. So I took a look into the order and found that the manufacturer did message me three days prior to show me the pictures of the pins and without my confirmation, shipped the pins out. As I took a closer look at the pictures, I saw the colors were off and that the enamel was inset, which meant they were soft enamel, not hard enamel. Now I have nothing against soft enamel pins. They look great and even, and I even have a collection of my own, but I prefer hard enamel and that's what I ordered, so that's what I expected. So issue number one was the incorrect colors and incorrect enamel. Issue number two was making assumptions. The manufacturer thought I needed the pins in a rush. I've never in our communication mentioned I needed the pins in a rush and was able to prove that as we communicated in writing. She then asked if I can sell the soft enamel pins and provided their manufacturing company feedback and I didn't feel comfortable doing that since I paid for these with my own money and I knew I had a set budget for them and I was not being gifted nor sponsored for these pins. Then she asked if I can design more pins and she will remake these with the next order. And that was the third strike. Because it wasn't fair to me, the customer, to be asked to make an additional purchase in order to get this purchase fixed. After going back and forth and she trying to sell me more items from their company, she finally agreed to redo my pins with no additional purchases or payments from me, of course. Now the pins do not look terrible. They are just not what I wanted. My characters did not look like rocks because the manufacturer used white instead of gray and I only received eight pins on top of that for each design when I purchased 10 of each design. I asked about this and she said she sent out a sample and if I liked them, I could order more. At this point, I was furious because I paid for a total of 20 pins and I only received 16. At this point, I filed a claim and wanted a refund, but she insisted that she wanted to make it right, so I decided to let her. So needless to say, I won't be using this manufacturer for further pin designs in the future. During the remake of the second batch of pins, she communicated every phase and every step she was taking. This time I had the experience with the manufacturer that I thought I would the first time. We communicated colors, shipping address, and she waited on my confirmation prior to shipping the pins. The experience was definitely better. And if I learned anything and could offer any adv advice on dealing with the manufacturer, it's to communicate your expectations. Insist on what you want because you are the customer and they can't do what they do without your payment. Don't feel rushed to commit to a manufacturer if you have initial doubts. Keep a written communication if possible and ask many questions. And I would also recommend proofs or photos and insist on your approval prior to them moving forward. And it goes without saying that you want to do this with patience, politeness, and respect because in the end, they are human, mistakes can and will be made, and you want to have the most positive experiences possible with your manufacturers. Okay guys, so we got an exciting package. These are the replacement pins that came in. I am excited, but I'm also super nervous. Understandably, I'm just worried that I'm not going to be happy with them. I did see a proof before they were shipped out and they looked good. So hopefully they look good in person as well. So I decided let's go ahead and do an unboxing together and get first reactions. All right, let's see what they look like. Okay, for first glance, they look, they're looking good. <laughs> they definitely look better than the first set of pins. 
So first one up is the catnip pin. I really like how they turned out. They are super cute. They, she's darker in stone color. Um, it's all one smooth um, layer because it's hard on enamel and not soft enamel. And yeah, I really like how it came out. So hopefully you like her too. Let's open up Rock and see how he came out. Oh, he's super, he's super adorable. Look at him. Look at his little leaf. It's so cute. Okay, he's nice and darker than before. And again, everything is so shiny and so smooth. So that's how he turned out. Okay guys, so just to give you a comparison, this is the first set of pins that came in. They're soft enamel, they were white, at, uh, the stone part was white, and they're not like one layer because it's soft enamel. And they don't look bad, it's just not what I wanted, and here is the new pin. So the color obviously is way different, the grass is more vibrant, she is darker so it looks more like stone. These came out way better than the soft enamel, in my opinion. But it, I'm going to offer both on the shop. So if you actually prefer the soft enamel version, that'll be available at a discounted price. And then I'm also going to offer the hard enamel. Oh, I didn't even check the back. <sighs> so they forgot to put my logo on the back. <laughs> of course. Oh. Uh, I, uh, okay, I'll reach out to them and talk to them about that, but um, I'm going to just pretty much be done with this manufacturer. I'm not going to make a big deal about them not getting the Crafty Origins logo in the back. It's just been one ordeal after the other, and so I'd just rather be done. But yeah, so at least they came out a lot more like I expected. So, yeah. And then let's take a look at Rox. And no, Rox does not have his logo on the back either. It's just plain. And as you can see, the grass looks more vibrant. He is darker in color, so he looks more like a rock. The details are just a lot more shinier and, it, and a lot more what I expected them to be in an enamel pen. So I really like the new version. These are going to be limited in quantity, and so if you prefer the soft enamel, then you may want to check out the shop. There are only going to be about six or seven of them available, and if these hard enamel ones do well, then I will go ahead and restock them. So it looks like we have the correct quantity, and the only issue was that the name was not put on the back, but again, I'm just going to overlook that. I'm going to let them know that this order is complete, finalized, I'm happy with everything for the most part, and I can move forward. So the next thing is that I'm going to quality check these, and we're going to go ahead and get some backing cards for these.
Okay guys, I've designed some backing cards for the pins and I like how they turned out. I just did like a simple background and I just put some boulders on there and then the pins will go above almost as if like the characters were resting on a boulder. And so I think it looks super cute. I just did the same design for both catnip and rocks because they're both rock characters. And then just put some social media information at the bottom. I made these at home so it'll be blank in the back. And then the other thing was that I had these lying around. I have a stack of them. And these are glassine bags. So they're biodegradable or at least recyclable. And they're wax paper bags. They're two to three quarter inch by four and a half inch. They came with a lot of them. And I figured I'll go ahead and design the backing cards to fit in this. So I want to make sure that the pins with its bulkiness fits inside. So let's go ahead and test one out. Yeah, it fits pretty nicely. I wanted to keep a gap at the top because these are also heat sealable bags. So all I would have to do is just put a flat iron or some kind of heat on top and it will seal it completely inside. And so it'll be protected from any water or anything like that in case um, the weather is not favorable during delivery. And you can still semi transport it's semi-transparent so you can still see through it a little bit and I can always put like a cute little sticker on top and what the customer would do is that they can just use this little tab right here or any side and just peel it and they'll be able to slide the pin out so I just wanted to use these bags up and I think it's like a perfect fit for now until I use them up and then I can order like eco-friendly clear cello bags so that's pretty much what it looks like. The character sits on top of the boulder. It's a little small for catnip, but it works perfectly for rocks. And I think it's super cute. So I'll start um, putting the pins on the packing cards.